Greetings, nerds. This is Sina Nerd. I'm your host, Sarah Belmont. And with me, as always, is our Mr. Producer, Will Paul. How are you doing tonight, Will? Doing very well, Sarah. How are you doing this, this evening? It's our last episode, like our last recording of 2022. I know. I know. It, it's, this year has flown by and it's, it, and, uh, it's been a lot of great content and, and I've enjoyed talking at all these shows uh, with you and movies and stuff this year. So, uh, yeah, yeah. Here's to here's am to I, the books. Yeah. Am I the only one who still feels like it's 2021? <laughs> like, I don't yeah. know what happened. I mean, yeah. I know there was this pandemic thing, but that was so 2020. Yeah, <laughs> and we're yeah. past that. But yet I feel as though there's this creature called 2021, 2022. And I'm just like, yeah. it's still yeah. like it still hasn't set in. Yeah. Um, that that there there was a difference between last year and this year. <laughs> yeah, you know it's funny. I know one of the things we're going to be doing tonight on our show is you know, going on over our top five movies and TV shows and stuff for the year. And I had to re- I had to remind myself to your point how some things that happen, like for example, yes. whenever we started our recording this year in 2022 you know we actually bled over spider-man no way home from 2021 because uh because the way the scheduling fell uh we 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 wrapped up um you know prior to us being able to go see it well i think and also i think the weather didn't work on it was mainly because like we had a snow apocalypse last december and um and travel and so right but it can't be on your top five of 2022 because technically it came out in 2021 so exactly but yeah exactly. but i had to do that i was like oh yeah i mean that came out 2021 so let me mm-hmm. scratch that so, yeah so yeah so i hear i totally hear there, that yeah there's other shows that i discovered in mm-hmm. 2022 but technically came out in 2021 <laughs> i'm just yeah. like God, I would love to put that on there. Yeah. Um, but before we get into all of that and talk about um, how we're going to be a little bit retrospective and nostalgic this evening, um, we do have a few things to cover. Um, for some odd reason, um, I haven't watched this trailer. I watched the teaser mm-hmm. that was released a few weeks ago the, mm-hmm. for Oppenheimer, but I haven't watched the most latest one because... I don't want to see anything else. I really, I just want to go into that movie, um, like most Christopher Nolan movies, as cold as possible. Mm -hmm. um, Because I just, there's something about the way he makes a movie where um, I think that the trailer will give too much away. So I'm just going to, I'm going to avoid, but I will see it and I will see it in theaters, of course. Of course. Yeah. Yeah. I did see, I did watch the trailer. Uh, it is amazing. Nolan. I mean, you he, he, he could just really tell this is just going to be a, a, an epic film. And, um, you know, as far as Cillian Murphy, you know, I was just looking at a picture of him and Oppenheimer made break really all the historical players. They, they mm-hmm. really, they really have done a good job of like casting, um, people who, who do look a lot like their real life counterparts. Um, of course, the the effect of the bomb going test going off. And, you know, one of the things I heard no one talk about was how he's not using CG to replicate right. the, the test. And so the only thing I can figure is, you know, it's going to be some kind of practical effect. Exactly. Maybe, maybe some, some miniatures, I would think, where he can really you know, get the detail and stuff. So, uh, so I was looking at that and, you know, of course, all you know, star stood at cast and uh, Jack Quaid was actually trending. I forgot he was actually in that. Um, mm-hmm. And so I saw him, you know, saw him briefly and, uh, and everything about it was just, it's just really, I'm really excited for this film when it comes out next year. Jack Quaid. Jeez. Yeah. Like, I feel like if you get cast, like main cast of a Christopher mm-hmm. Nolan movie, it's like, it's like getting the golden ticket. Mm-hmm. We're like, okay, I'll be in future of his. Yep. <laughs> I, mean, <laughs> yeah. I, mean, I, I mean, it's funny when you were talking about the casting and I'm thinking to myself, how, like, wh- what does Christopher Nolan see 
because he has found himself these actors who we see again and again in these movies, and yet they're perfectly cast every single time in yeah. these different movies. And it's just, it's crazy to me. Yeah. Um, but, and, and I know it's not necessarily Christopher Nolan casting because there's always a casting director, but I, I think that that man has some influence. Um, but yeah, so looking forward to that July movie because he always releases his in July and it just so happens that it's going to line up with the actual first detonation of the atomic bomb. So yep. like, I don't, <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Um, <laughs> the other thing that dropped that I did not watch, um, but I've seen, I've seen a lot of clips. Like I've seen a mm -hmm. lot of little things and I understand what happened, but Tom yep. Cruise just bringing Tom Cruise. Yep. Um, and announcing the next Mission Impossible movie. Yeah. Right. It, yeah. They had, it was like two things. It was like that. So it was like a nine minute featurette that he dropped. They dropped, uh, I guess it was Sunday. Because I, and, and the other thing I saw that during I was watching the football games over the weekend, uh, there was one, it was also Tom Cruise, man, Tom Cruise, but thanking fans for, again, Watching and and resurrecting the the theaters with going to see Top Gun two and he was skydiving <laughs> and you know he's just like on the side of, you know on the plane or whatever he's like talking mm -hmm. and then just you know he just jumps off and he's skydiving and he's like to, you know talking to the camera like as he's falling free in free fall and 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 then. And he's like, see ya. And he like does a little he does a little flip and just keeps on going. But I was just like, no matter what you think about this, all the Scientology and all the other things around Tom Cruise, the man sells out as far as being a showman. I mean, he truly is he he is fully embraced his craft and, and puts everything into it. And especially you see it with the with the nine minute featurette, uh, where they're rehearsing the stunt and he's doing mm -hmm. it over and over to just get it right and, and, and they construct this they construct the um, ramp and they have all the safety apparatus and stuff around for when they actually do go to own location to actually film it and where he does get on the ramp you know bike goes off i think it's one of, i think it's if not the first one of the probably one of the first stunts or first scenes that's supposed to be in in um in the film and he does it and then they and he ends up doing it like six times the actual mm -hmm. jump and then he does you know he's where you know and they're like oh yeah the bike didn't like this time the bike wasn't just right it didn't fall far enough away from it I mean, it was just like what the what the hell this is like this is bonkers but the man sells it and 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 really um you know, you, you have to just tip your hat to him. And I was listening to a, a podcast um, with uh, two actors from Star Trek Enterprise, and one of them, Connor Trenier, happened to, to be in a film with uh, Tom Cruise. And he was just talking about how Tom is behind the scenes and how, um, one, he was like starstruck, but two, how much Tom is just a guy and really takes care of the crew and really, really just is just a good person to work with and so uh, i was just very interesting hearing hearing that hearing that interview this week and then also seeing the seeing the trailers and the featurette and you know tom talk working with the cat with the crew and everything while they're trying to put these stunts together and yeah i mean i, I can see why people want to work with this person yeah definitely no yeah. he's uh he's a character he is. character life <laughs> yep, yep. <laughs> okay 60 years old and still doing it i'll tell you <laughs> that's that's insane but yeah. all right so we've teased it long enough how are we gonna st let's do you want to start with movies yeah let's start with top movies movies okay yeah. so we're gonna we're gonna go back and forth and list our top five movies that we have seen that all released in 2022 um, so before I start my list, I just want to disclose to the listeners and they shouldn't be surprised about this. Last night when I was writing my list, um, it took me less than five minutes. Um, 
And, and it would have taken me probably three minutes had I not had to go back through our past episodes to make sure that I was remembering every movie we saw. <laughs> <laughs> because I, I, I don't know what it is. I, I, I blame 2020, but mm -hmm. there's something about lately. I it just, even in my, and we did open this up. Like we didn't have to talk about these things during our podcast show so they can be of any genre i honestly just don't watch movies anymore <laughs> i don't <laughs> i, I, I know. can't there is not a well there's one movie um and that will kick off my list because i did over my 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 fifth movie and this is no way be saying this is the best movie to have been or this is like the top five movie to have been released this year no no this is a top five movie i saw <laughs> <laughs> this is number five <laughs> um so i did end up going seeing this with my brother and sister-in-law while i was in michigan um for thanksgiving um and we saw the fablemans hmm. which for those who haven't heard about this movie, it's um, Steven Spielberg directed, and it's essentially an autobiography about his family and his life as a kid. There is, I want to say, 40, if not 30% of this movie, which is what I paid the ticket for to see, which is him being so obsessed with movies as a child and growing up into becoming this director. There is 60 to 70% of this movie that I did not want to watch, <laughs> which was, <laughs> and I'm going to, I'm going to be very critical. Michelle Williams giving a very bad performance <laughs> mm. and, and you're supposed to not like her character. She plays the mom. You're supposed to not like her, but, and, and I usually love bad, like evil characters, but I just didn't, like, her, she took me out of it um, mm. rather than, like, making me, I don't know. She she took me out of it. But, yeah, I I don't know. It was slow. It was long. Um, but, but like I said, there was a good chunk of it that was very interesting um, to see how a kid can... Um, can can come up with these ideas of how to put things together and bring to life uh, train crashes and whatnot and and shooting people like it, it's very interesting and I wish I would have we would have seen more of that been mm -hmm. told but I think he was doing this as more of an ode to his parents and to his um, family mm -hmm. um, and childhood so so to, to teach their own but that is my fifth movie on my list so will on that note you can tell us your number five yeah so my number five is a film that completely caught me by surprise that uh, and that is prey uh it was uh on hulu it was the sequel to uh in the predator franchise and um it it was like i said whenever we earlier this year when we watched it and then i and as I was putting my list together, still think the same. Uh, this movie, for me, almost rivals *The Predator* as far as um, as far as top film in that in that particular franchise. Uh, it was I watched the um, lang the Native American language version, um, the Lakota about a tribe, I believe. And you know, watching it in that format after even after watching the the English language version, uh, you know, just had greater appreciation for it. Just beautifully shot, uh, had hit all the right beats as far as just uh, where you thought they were just going to follow the numbers and 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 all. But then they had those surprises to happen in the film. So uh, as far as the twists and turns and everything and how. The, the our, our protagonist how she uh, ends up defeating the predator in the film so i that one uh was one of it was my fifth uh, ranked movie for the year okay so number four <laughs> <laughs> i tell you I, I at least had only four movies on my list thinking that I had not seen another movie for about two minutes and until I found it in our podcast history. Um, 
because I forgot this movie came out. I forgot that I actually watched this movie in theaters for three hours. Um, the Batman. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I'm surprised here. I thought it would be a little bit higher on your list. <laughs> no. Why? Why? I have brought this up that I keep forgetting yeah. this movie actually happened this year a few times. And to me, if I'm just being honest, if I forget about a movie, then I I can't say that it was one of my favorites. Like, I just yeah. honestly can't. I know it's a good movie. I know that the cinematography is good. But I honestly never think about it. I mm. never think about it to the point where I forget it. And I mm. I just I don't I don't know what it is, but um I know I watched it. I just yeah. Yeah. there there's I, I it didn't it didn't hit me. The trailer hit me more than the movie did. Yeah. Fair <laughs> enough. <laughs> but yeah, so so again, full disclaimer, everybody, I am not saying these are my favorite movies of this year. I'm just saying this is what I this I'm putting list in order of what I remember. <laughs> 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 like this is so funny to me. Yeah. Oh, I used to not be this person. I used to watch like everything that came out. Man, yeah. that pandemic took away something. Man, anyway, yeah. but Will, you're number four. <laughs> it was it was also the Batman. It, yeah, um, and yeah. It, I mean it was good. I mean I I, I really enjoyed it. Uh, and for with all the superhero movies that were out, that was out this year, with DC and Marvel, it um, yeah, it, I you know it it, it definitely was. Uh, of of the ones that were out that I watched, uh, it was it was definitely where I ranked it for. I mean, it was and, and like you, I think there's there's elements of it that still resonate with me as far as like the score. Um, I was just thinking about Michael Giacchino uh, recently with the uh, um, Werewolf by Night, and also I know he also scored that's a score for like Star Trek Prodigy, uh, which is a favorite show of mine. But um, but other pieces of it, you know, as, as we get as I get distance from it, it it it, it doesn't it's 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 very good. But and uh, in, in when I look at other films that I watched this year, which like which was um, I think I have like eight nine films I watched this year, and when I look at my list as far as contenders, um, it, yeah, it is it, it comes in at four for me. So I'm curious. Yeah. Are the rest of your movies movies that we've talked about on this podcast? Um yes. Okay. But not necessarily ones we talked about. Only not not necessarily Wait. yeah. Yes, I'll just say I'll yes. I'll I'll keep I'm it so there. confused by that answer all of a sudden. <laughs> yeah, yes. I mean I have they all these films have been mentioned on the podcast this year. Oh, have been mentioned. Or okay. watched. Or watched by us both We're by watched. both of us by both of us this year. So continue to number three. No. Okay, fine. I was just trying to see because I feel like I kind of know what the last three are, but again, yeah. very confused by that answer. Um, so I put Doctor Strange too. Mm. Um, yeah. I'm I'm doing really bad about this like whole this is why I ranked them because I can't stress this enough. Let's literally I will watch five movies this year, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> I watched five movies. I remember liking this movie. I didn't think it was as bad as everybody thought it was, but I also know it wasn't that great because we all saw uh the um Doctor Strange episode of What If. And what if it's what we wanted this to be, pun intended. So so overall, I just was like, oh, okay, it's about mid-tier. But yeah, anyway. Yeah. All right. What is your number three? <laughs> My third one is Wakanda Forever. Why is your third one Wakanda? I'm confused now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so confused by your list. I I almost just want okay okay I'll let you explain, but yeah. I'm gonna rush through my next two because I'm very curious about what your number one is. Okay, 
Did I miss a movie? Did I forget about it? I'm so confused. <laughs> no, 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 no. Remember when I, whenever we put, uh, I mentioned to you, I was like, anything we watch, whether it's stre- streaming or what we saw it in the theater. Yeah, but so. I, okay. Yeah. Never mind. Yeah. This is going to be a spat had elsewhere, but anyway, go ahead. Yeah. yeah. So, oh no, but we're kind of forever. I mean, it was, it was great. I mean, we just talked about it recently. Uh, definitely did justice to, um, you know, I think Chadwick's memory, as far as the, yeah, I thought they handled it very well, um, it uh, hit the right emo- emotional beats as far as, um, you know, telling the story, giving us a resolution. Spoiler alert, if you haven't watched it, uh, I thought they had a very um, interesting resolution to how they're going to move forward with the uh, character of Black Panther. But uh, and and Angela Bassett was just phenomenal, uh, and she and she's getting her recognition for it as far as Globe to Globe and other uh, uh, you know Critics Choice and other uh, other uh, things on the award circuit, and and so it was it was definitely um, yeah, like I said, I, I really enjoyed it. Definitely the best, obviously the best MCU film of the year, probably the best comic book movie for the year. So so confused about what else man that you're making me try to remember all the things that you watched this year and i'm just i'm not doing it's okay okay it's okay okay. yeah my my second movie is um thor of love and thunder again i just watched it and i remember (laughs) liking (laughs) no way is my second favorite yeah you what? liked it better than I did, yeah. Thor is not, yeah, it's not, yeah, it didn't even get a glimpse. Didn't even, it wasn't I a like blip, it, oh my. I liked it. I liked it better than Doctor Strange too. But so this yeah. is killing me. Okay, what's your number two? My number two is everything, everywhere, all at once. Okay, so yeah, you mentioned. Okay, you mentioned it. Yep. God, what other movie did you mention watching this year? Well, we got it. Oh, well, we, you go. You give your number one, then I'll then I'll. Oh, okay. Um. Well, yeah. Mine. Mine is again obvious. Black Panther. But okay. Well, what's your number one? <laughs> <I don't laughs> care if, my list yeah. is shit, guys. <laughs> my no, list, no, no, we'll no. actually put effort into his list. <laughs> like, no. My my no. That's just uh, Top Gun Maverick was my number one. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but you didn't. But see, you didn't see that one. So and uh, yeah. So you know. It, again, yeah. this, it, this is our list of things we watch. So. Wait, this is what, so you, yeah. but you really liked everything, everywhere, all at once. Yeah. Why? Why Maverick over it? Uh, I think everything, everywhere, all at once. I it was hard to try to pick between these two. I, I will have to say. Because everything, everywhere, all at once was such, it was so, like, different. And it told the time travel story in such a fun, different, unique way. And and, and it actually made a whole hell of a lot more sense than what they've been trying to shove down our throats with the MCU. Um, but also Michelle Yao and, and, the, and, and the cast, everyone, it was just a, it was just a really fun quirky film that what you know that that you know when I, well, even on a rewatch it 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 holds up but uh, top gun maverick it was just it I, it was just some it was both a sit in your seat popcorn thrill ride but also had such a compelling story about this character who we last saw, gosh, what, 25, 30 years, however many years ago, 36 years ago, however long it was with the original film, and, <laughs> and carrying the story forward and with Maverick and and uh, Kaczynski and, and everyone associated with the Top Gun universe, it, I, I, and also just the simple fact that, and also the fact that, you know, from the block, but the the box office aspect of it as well. Everything about that That's film just factor. really, really, really hit, really hit for me. So I thought it was at least for me, my number one film of this year of the, of, of the, the films that I, that I watched. 
I don't think box office should factor, but I was laughing earlier because when you said we saw like 36 years ago, I was doing math in my head and thinking <laughs> to myself, pretty sure that's an 80s movie. So no, Will, it was yeah. not we saw. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I saw. Yeah, well, I yeah. well, I mean, yeah. true. I know. Fair I point, know. Fair point. But it's been, I mean, but it's on like every single day. So. I know. I know. Yeah. Well, yeah. um, so those are the the Will's top five movies and movies that I just have seen and I put in a in a very careless order. Um, take it or leave it. But that is yeah. the quote unquote top five movies. Um, and so now we're going to talk about the top five TV shows. Very similar for me. <laughs> <laughs> I like I actually could do a top ten um, mm. after after. 20 minutes of research, quote unquote, um, I could probably do a top 10 if because I did go through our logs and I initially thought we were doing top 10 TV shows. Yeah. Um, a few texts later, no, we are only doing top five. So I, um, but yeah, I did put some things on here and initially it was all things, well, it still is all things we talked about on the show, but yeah. it's, it's mainly genre shows. Um, not because I don't watch other things. I just, I don't know. I don't know. I felt very lazy in list making, but. <laughs> uh, okay, I started I started last time. So, Will, why don't you give us yeah. our number five? Your number, number five. Number five for me was Peacemaker. Why do you do this to me? <laughs> <laughs> you what? just make me want to know what is on your list because I'm very surprised by that ranking considering how many times you bring up Peacemaker. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, whatever I thought, and I did the same thing, I basically went back and looked at everything we talked about this year, both genre, outside of genre, et cetera. Um, and I, this, you know, it was... It was it was hard to really think when I think about it, but with what I think of like shows that just really caught me off guard, where I, I went into expecting one thing and I got something completely different than what I was expecting, and, and make an impression where I'm still where I still even though I don't talk about it much on the show, it's just still one of those shows that like oh you know I really enjoyed and and have the actually you know we were talking i think about doing rewatches and stuff this is one i have done a rewatch um it, it it really is one of my it was one of my favorites for this year okay okay and and really, um, yeah i don't know if we want to do honorable mentions or not but no uh, don't okay. don't want to um okay. right. so so my fifth movie or fifth tv show as I rewrite my list, is going to be Severance. Um, so I will put that at number five. Um, huh? Oh yeah, go ahead. That was that was, that was as well. Huh? Okay. I mean, I know you, I know you recently discovered it. So yeah, I recently watched it, and then I had to look up and confirm that it did come out in 2022. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it definitely is a 2022. Yeah. <laughs> 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 so, <laughs> time yeah time blending just, but yeah it's definitely I'm just, 2020 i'm just like i'm like and now i'm like thinking to myself wait was the most recent uh, season of succession 2022 <laughs> 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 oh my god anyway um severance on apple plus first season solid storytelling a lot of mystery a lot of ambiguity um I think that why it's not sticking more with me is because I feel like I've I've seen a few iterations. Um, Homecoming, for one, kept playing through my mind while I was watching this show. Mm. Um, I not to say that Homecoming is better than Severance. Um, I think both of them bring different things to tell a very precarious story mm. um and and it definitely i for 
for a show that like we talk about this a lot, like constructing a solid season Mm -hmm. while leaving the door open for future stories. This show in particular did a very good job of that because there is a lot that they did not answer yet. You feel satisfied, which with what you learn throughout the first, I think it's eight or nine episodes, but yeah, I'll put um, five severance. Um, it kicked off. Um, it kicked Stranger Things for season four off my list. Um, okay. But yeah. Will, yeah, your top four. Number four for me was The Boys. And okay. yeah, I mean they delivered again. I mean, it, this show is so consistent. It's always thought provoking. I mean, I, you know, when I think of, of discussions that you and I had over about TV shows over th- this year. I mean, both of us just can't say enough great things about it. And also, um, you know, the, the, obviously the topical parallels that it has with, with things that, that are going on. So, uh, yeah, I mean, Homelander, that's all I have to say. <laughs> what about you? Homelander. Um, so I can confirm that Succession Season 3 aired in the fall of 2021. So I cannot put that on. <laughs> Yep, yep. <laughs> <laughs> um ooh. okay um we own this city mm, that was that peacemaker just edged that one out for me yeah i just um, john bernthal's performance in yeah. that show and the fact that it's the wire mm-hmm. <laughs> like came it's like a a though an uh, the sixth season of The Wire adjacent. Yeah. Um, yeah. I just, I remember we we had a lot of um, good conversations about that while it was airing. Yeah. Um, and although I haven't thought about it much since it, um, we finished our discussions about it, I do really recall during, um, in the moment, being really mm-hmm. amazed by it um yeah. especially the performances and how they told the stories um and weaved everything together from past future and present so i thought that was um very good but yeah. what is your number three yeah my number three is one that I, is star trek strange new worlds mm-hmm. uh, it was uh i know i know uh, we did picard season two uh this year which i think we both were like uh, eh. But the reason why Strange New Worlds was on there for me, it was a, just a shot in the arm for what this franchise, the new Trek franchise needed. Really gets back to the, the spirit of the episodic nature of Star Trek. Def, the uh, Anson Mount, who plays Christopher Pike, just, just carries, just, just, uh, carries this, the show. And, I mean, the whole ensemble cast is is phenomenal, but he just has extra level of magnetism that really just, you know, you just want to, if you could serve on the Starship Enterprise, he's that type of captain you would want to be with. And um, I think, again, has the, uh, really gets back to sort of the vision that Gene Roddenberry had for the show. And I, I'm so looking forward to, to season two, I think, which will, should be coming out hopefully, hopefully next year. But, uh, yeah, uh-huh. it's just, major worlds is definitely, those my number third for 2022. Yes. I, I, I figured at least one Star Trek show had to be on your list. <laughs> <laughs> that I got right finally. Yeah. And I, I know what the top two are and I think I know the order you're going to put them in <laughs> despite me, but, um, the number three is the boys season three. Um, Hero Gasm. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Hero Gasm. Yes, yes. Okay. Like both about the season and a certain episode in the season. And I really, I vaguely remember us even talking. The episode prior to Hero Gasm was like, we were saying, we haven't even gone in there yet. <laughs> and <laughs> here is yeah. um, The boys, it's just, pure entertainment and it's smart Mm -hmm. um it's such smart writing 
And it will kill me the day when I get tired of Homelander. I hope to never see that day. But I, I'm i still amazed that we're headed into the fourth season. And him being him is not, I'm not tired of it. Yep. Um, but I am starting to get a bit anxious of like, okay, so how are they going to change things up now? Like, like we can't keep using the same tricks. Um, and, and even in the third season, they still managed to pull out some rabbits. So I don't know if you haven't watched the boys yet, then I don't, I think you should. I highly recommend it. Um, Anthony Starr, I hope you get that critics choice awards or whatever it is, even though it should go to Patty. <laughs> <laughs> More of Patty later. Yeah, um, yeah. So, Will, why don't you tell us our number? Your number two. <laughs> now, this was really hard because both these shows <laughs> were, uh, yeah. I mean, it was hard, but Hot the House of the Dragon was number my number two. Yep. And, yeah. Um, I, and it's a phenomenal show. I, I mean, it. Yeah, you're right. Patty Cosendine, he, I, I, I'm hoping the Emmy voters give him the credit that he is due because I, to this day, when I see these other award shows, nominations, not list him as, as, as a, uh, in, in the acting category, I'm just, I'm stunned. Uh, I mean, the scene, well, so many scenes, but of course, obviously the scene of him going down whenever he was like literally at death's door, whenever there was a whole issue of when they were trying to usurp uh, his decisions as far as Monera. Um, I mean, sh yeah, uh, th that, that, that scene alone should get him, get it for him. But that show overall was just, it was very ex exceptional. And, you know, and I did not watch uh, Game of Thrones uh, when it was airing. But, you know, so I came to this universe late. I'm 100% mm -hmm. on board with it now. Um, and really, really enjoyed everything about this series. I mean, I, it, it, I mean, really, it, it was definitely what clearly one, if I could, if, if I could have a tie for first, I would say, let's just, just tie these two, my, my first two, my top two choices, because uh, it was really hard to, to, uh, to to top what I watched each week, and and I'm sure our listeners know who know listen to our discussions on this show. I mean, it it you know we had some great conversations about this show, and 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 I learned a lot for, about Game of Thrones from you, and 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 you know really looking forward to the second season, which I believe they start filming. Uh, I want to say in March, so um, so yeah, that was my second. I just feel like you have recency bias. I think you have recency bias with your first pick because, and we had this, so I'm not surprised by this because you told me last week what you were leaning towards mm -hmm. um, before we even decided we were going to do this. Um, so I'm not surprised, but I feel like there's a, there's a little bit of recency bias. I will, I'll, I'll explain why I picked my, top one here here in a sec but i want to hear your second okay my second's peacemaker go <laughs> <laughs> really yeah i i, I think it was a solid tv show yeah. like i yeah. i i don't i don't i first of all we referenced it in multiple conversations mm -hmm. it's stuck around in our conversations since it yeah. aired in january yeah like I I didn't forget about it. Mm -hmm. um, plus, um, Vigilante. Okay. Vigilante <laughs> and Eagly, two of the best sidekicks yeah. to ever come up. And just their dynamic with Peacemaker. Um, yeah. I, I don't know. I, I just, we again, it was a big surprise to kick off this year. Mm -hmm. It stuck with us. We kept going back to it in terms of comparisons with other things that we were watching. Um, which are to me are signs of in at the end retrospectively that stood out among everything else. Yeah, yeah, no disagreement, no disagreement, and hundred percent, hundred percent agree with you there. 
And yes, so with that, yes, my number <laughs> one is indeed Andor. <laughs> and it's not because I'm a huge Star Wars fan either. I mean, even though it has it, that does play a role in it. But uh and, and that and the reason why it does play a role in it is because it took us into this universe from a place where heroes get their hands dirty and not everything is black and white and the our 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 our, our characters like Cassian and Luthan and Mon Motha were all have to you know they all are coming into this rebellion from different places and having to you know what you know the bomb moth of the case you know what compromises is she's going to have to make to be able to fund this thing and luthan you know his speech as far as he has sacrificed everything and know that he won't be able to see that sunrise of what of what freedom in the galaxy and then of course cassian and his growth from a guy who was just eking the out of living on the outer rim to uh or, or and the mid rim to a guy who we see the evolution of why of, of the character that we end up meeting in rogue one and and i have been rewatching uh both both house and 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 andor and on the, you know, on, the, on the second on the second watch of Andor, I, it, I really the, the the story that they that Tony Gilroy has has put together for this series really it's just it's just such exceptional it's ex- exceptional writing and truly for me it became edge of my seat television and you know and i was i just felt spoiled because my top two were running concurrent for a while uh Mm -hmm. so and and um so you know when health did end and we have andor continuing on um yeah i mean you know it was it was it was appointment tv i still had that appointment tv like i had uh, that I haven't had in since probably Peacemaker earlier this year in the boys as well. Uh, so yeah, so all these shows on on my list all had that, like you said, that just stuck with it, stuck with me. I know we didn't, I didn't, inter, you know, wherever I could interweave a Star Trek reference during our conversations, I would. <laughs> but uh, uh, but uh, but yeah, but but with Andor, um, it I, like I said, it 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 took this universe to another level you know you have you know of course the mandalorian which is like the fun side of star wars and the you know how the pew 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 this really explores the the uh, another side of that galaxy that does it that it's refreshing not to have jedi and force and all that kind of stuff and, and really show what the everyday life of people under the oppressive empire is like and and what led them to these ordinary people to rise up to overthrow this government. So that's my, that's my case on Andor. Yeah. It's interesting because both house of dragon and Andor are prequels Mm -hmm. and they are arguably, well, Andor just isn't on my list because it did not hit me um, the way it did Will and others. Um, I'm not saying that it's not a good television show. I know it's good writing. I know all of that. I just, I don't know. Star Wars. <laughs> yeah. Will's like disclaimer about not being a big Star Wars. He is bigger Star Wars fan clearly than me because me, I had trouble remembering names and all of that. Um, I had no trouble with House of Dragon. And maybe that is because I watched faithfully the first series of um, Game of Thrones. Mm-hmm. Loved it. Um, but I will admit, like, even though I had that love for Game of Thrones, um, House of Dragon just surprised me so much because a to come off of House of a Game of Thrones and to deliver on this level, I didn't even think was possible. Um, and for them just to focus on this one family, it was really just about the Targaryens for these eleven episodes and. It um and and it so in a way it was very small yet it felt um massive in scope 
And um, and that was one of the things that drew a lot of people to Game of Thrones is like you have all of these families, you have all of these cities and you have this map um, and there, there's all these characters. But here it's just this one family um, and this this daughter and a father um, and a wife. Mm-hmm. And it's just I don't know. And and what I think towards the end of it, we we're talking, it's a very maternal show. Yeah. Um, which is a rarity I'm finding because we talk a lot and maybe it's because we talk a lot of comic book um, comic book shows, but there's a lot of stuff about fathers um, and paternal like that dynamic. So so maybe that's what I found was refreshing. It was very maternal and it was a lot about mothers um, and some dads, but mainly mothers. And, and I tell you, I said this before and I'll say it again. If you don't want your daughter to get knocked up at 16, just make her watch this first season of television um, because there's a lot of gruesome childbirths that happen <laughs> that yeah. never make you want to give birth to anyone, okay? <laughs> <laughs> this, is, this is the best thing this show during health class, so I'll tell you that much. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, everyone has heard me talk about this show, so um, those are my thoughts and I don't think it's a surprise to anybody why it's number one. Um, but yeah, those are my top five. So, awesome. okay. Yeah. That was fun. That was fun. Uh, it's always inter- I mean, interesting to hear, especially at the end of the year when we can look back at everything we've watched and, you know, and we've, we've covered the gamut of, 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 of things, you know, it's not, we know we we not just comic book shows and stuff. And, uh, um, I think our book and our list on our list huh? book shows though we covered a lot of comic book shows yeah we did yeah but uh but yeah but uh, yeah i mean yeah i guess our, our respective list did like you know should reflect that but uh, you know but fan- the fan- fantasy ended up being our our top two <laughs> so yes yeah yes definitely yeah. prequels which is still very very interesting yeah um did anything about my list surprise you um, I was uh, just that how high Peacemaker was. Interesting. Yeah. I, 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 thought was, I for some reason, I thought that was a given. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I figured it was going to be on there. I just, I, I just didn't know. I thought it would, uh, yeah, I, I didn't expect it to be that high. I'm trying to think about like, yeah. 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 And it was you, hard. Yeah. Hope that I would put Andor at least on. The oh, list. I knew. I, I, yeah, I knew Andor would not be on your list. I, I, yeah, I, I, I was like, nah, nah. I, I thought maybe uh, Stranger Things four, but the Severance was the one that, and you, and you, as you noted, you not that one knocked it off. Uh, I thought you would have Stranger Things four on your on your on your top. Yeah, um, Severance. I, I felt I feel obligated to add Severance because it's it's just it's a pretty good. And again, if I hadn't watched Homecoming, I probably would have liked it more. Mm. Um, but all I kept thinking about was Homecoming <laughs> during that <laughs> entire show. Not yeah. to say like it's the same story because it's yeah. not. It's right. just the feeling is very similar. Got it. Um, but anyways, so so yeah. Um, clearly we had fun and clearly I was just shocked by Will's list because he likes to throw curveballs and make stuff up and make me want to work harder, even though I don't, <laughs> um, in the long run. I just, I mean, this to me just tells me I need to, in 2023, see more movies. I don't think that's going to happen, but yeah. <laughs> and why? Well, I can just watch the trailer and I've basically watched the movie, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> basically watched it i feel like i've seen black adam now a hundred times oh yeah yeah i still have <laughs> it yeah it comes on hbo max seal on the banner i'm like oh go to go to doom patrol <laughs> yeah okay so we do have two episodes of doom patrol to talk about very strange episodes um i i i watched both of them did you watch both episode three and four i did okay um, so what are, what are your thoughts on episode three? So episode three, Nostalgia Patrol, it, um, so here, I, you know how we were, whenever we talked about the show last week where I was saying that I feel like it's, it's getting back to, to what 
drew me to it to, to begin with. I, I feel mm-hmm. like that's that's how I'm feeling about this season because Nostalgia Patrol, for, for me at least, felt like we were getting character development, but we're also moving the story along, especially when I think about what all had transpired with our with our characters because it, it because the episode you know we we we, we have our, our our pairings again except for vic because somehow they still send vic off to to, to um back to detroit but the rest of the gang is still in cloverton and um i i feel like even everyone even even larry who which i was comp- was complaining about last week about feeling like he was spinning in his wills um has something new and something and growth that we we where we where we we've seen that evolution of of these characters and so i really enjoyed this i enjoyed both these episodes that 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 uh, we're talking about this week yeah i don't know what it is i could not get into nostalgia patrol Mm. I found I found myself like starting to do other things while watching it um, mm. and just getting tired and and just not glued to my television mm. um, because it just felt like a continuation of a lot of the um, character beats that we had in the first two episodes, like mm-hmm. just an extension of it. And in a way, that's what a third episode, I guess, should do because they've already set up the premise about what yeah. the, we have a mortis coming in. And now I'm just getting the impression that this first half is just going to end with the arrival of a mortis, just like how um, Brother Blood arrived yeah. at the end of Titans, the first yeah. half of Titans. And so now I'm just kind of mad. <laughs> like, I see where they're going. Oh no, this is going to get dragged out. Um, but still, I mean, I I still like this just because I like these characters at the end of the day. Um, yeah. And they always manage to do something like have a puzzle pl- piece give you an orgasm. Sure. Yeah, yeah sure. sure. Yeah. But no. and that, yeah, and that orgasm, yeah, and just the puzzle piece, you know, it goes back to the sisterhood of Dada, and that's the other thing that this show does a really great job of of, of tying previous seasons in, into into the current ones. So, um, so when when Jane had that orgasm, I was like, oh yeah, Miss Lady in the candy shop that she was that was so enamored with with her. Um, but you're right. The other thing that whenever you're talking, it made me think about. Uh, the show and you're right there there were moments especially Vic's storyline where I had I did struggle to get through that yeah. um, because I, I it just I saw where they were going it was trying to like tell the story of you know you can't go home again and Vic trying to like just helicopter in and be with his boys and like everything is all good and and all and and, and the awkwardness and, and maybe that was intentional and maybe that's why he, it 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 was you know well on the one hand very well acted what was that awkwardness but it just seemed given that all the other things that were going on in the episode it it, it did seem to bring things to a crawl when they whenever they well, went to Vic's story it just wasn't interesting like yeah. It was sure it was well um, acted and the awkwardness was definitely intentional but for me. You're, 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 this is a trope, like this Mm -hmm. idea. Okay. Well, I can't be a superhero. So I've accepted that I've, I want to be normal again. Let me try to go be normal. We've seen that a hundred times before in other things, but what our expectation is they're going to tell it in a very doom patrol manner, you know, in a manner that fits this story, this overall story, um, and this show that we've been watching now for four seasons. And and instead, it did, like, the stereotypical thing to do. Where, mm-hmm. like, oh, I'm going to meet up with my old childhood friends. And they're going to resent me because I left them. But I didn't feel like I was leaving them. I I was grieving. And it's like, okay, okay. All right. <laughs> I get yeah. it. We get it. So yeah. I just, 
I think when we when we say like these things aren't hitting, it's because none of this is at the core of the of the emotional beat. It's not a new thing. It's not a revolutionary idea. But what we've seen in other episodes of Doom Patrol is them tell it in a very unique way. Like we were just right. talking about the boys. The boys has a have told. Like they are their way of portraying these superhero beats that we've seen a hundred million times before, yet in a very boys manner. It's just a different. It it hits you and it's refreshing and it's more nuanced. And I think that in this episode in particular, I was lacking the nuance. Mm, mm. Um. And then it just got weird and I felt like I fell asleep and I woke up and suddenly I felt like it was mocking Star Trek. And I was like, ooh, that's not good. We'll love Star Trek. What's going on here? Oh, I don't I understand. Yeah, I cracked I, I cracked up whenever I saw that. I actually I, I like that moment. Um where because one thing it and and, and and this is repetitive, but it but it is a very doom patrolly thing. Um, Larry and Rita. I mean, Larry, it just reinforces again their relationship and how he truly is her best friend. And I think he had the best line in, in the whole episode, as far one of the best lines of the episode, whenever he was uh there with the uh guy in the in the one film, and you know, as far as how Dr. Janice wanted to to get Rita to emote, and he's like, Well, she she's an actress, she she wakes up emoting. <laughs> you know? right. And, and, and but also, whenever they were in the theater and watching the films, and, and him deducing that, wait a minute, you know, I've watched all of Rita's films. This this is not how this happened. So you know, so it, it, it so I and I think for me as a viewer, and, and something that you touched on too, this is why I, I still go back to the shows because these characters I have become attached to, mm-hmm. and. And even though they drive us crazy sometimes, and some and, and all, and sometimes like like we were saying with Vic, I mean, it was they didn't really tell that story in a new way. The fact of the matter is, I am invested in these characters, and I I want to see where their journey goes. Right. Oh, yeah. I thought I thought there was more. Um, yeah, yeah, definitely. And, and on that note, I was surprised in the fourth episode when suddenly we were back on Danny street yeah. and, and door, it was a Dorothy episode. I was like, mm-hmm. well, in the back of my mind, I kind of figured we would see her, but this, this is early and we're already here. Um, and at first I was kind of like, what are we doing? What are we doing? But the f- longer the episode went on, the more I, um, the more I I liked it. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it it does in the long run feel like a detour, but but that's why they put the little teaser at the end um, with the the connection between the two episodes and the the main bad guys from both episodes dropping off these these items that they've collected from both Dorothy and the Doom Patrol in episode three um, as we build up to Immortus um, being revived. So, yeah. Yeah. Was, yeah. So was, was the implication that he was the author of the Casey Space comic books? So, yeah. So I was... I don't know if the artist... Was Immortus? Um, no, I, I don't oh. think he was. I'm not saying yeah. that. Okay. Was was w- the, the, the he was the artist of the comic books though? Yeah. Uh, oh. Oh. The the um. So in the comic itself, so Casey, because she was actually created by Danny. Um, okay. Yeah, and so, but they, they, yeah, so yeah, so but they, 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 they tinkered with it here, um, and instead of it being Danny who, because Danny basically created the the um, comic book character, 
and um, and then basically, you know, allowed you know, Danny published those comics under the Danny Comics imprint, and and the people who were in the Danny Danny world could get it. Um, they they tweaked it here, and Danny uh, created the Casey from Dorothy's imagination. So as far as the as far as the guy who uh, there was with Doctor Janice and uh, Tom Alox, uh who was who was doing all the storyboarding and stuff, I, 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 he, I guess we will find out who he is as far as the whole crew crew is uh, that Immortus is putting together. Because I know there was the also the other the guy that was paired with Larry in the third episode. I know in the in the teaser for the sub, for next week's episode, I think he reappears. So mm-hmm. I think he's so I think Immortus is just getting a bunch of different people together to ultimately um, help him come back. I mean, well, I guess I guess Immortus is like obviously he's immortal, but you know that theme of of loss and 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 death and how permanent it is, especially when Dorothy was talking about that to Casey, um, and 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 the various talismans that. Uh, that he that he's collecting um you know i think it, it's going to be the vehicle to help immortus i guess continue come back or from wherever wherever he is at this point uh because yeah because yeah, i mean i know i know immortus and niles calder had they they i think niles was a student of, of immortus so um so i think that uh, if i recall i think niles I think Niles and 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 Immortus got into a conflict, and um, Immortus got injured or something like that, and had to go went away for a while. So, um, so I, I think that's just sort of how things will will unfold in, in the second half of the season after we get the big cliffhanger at a, at the halfway point. What um what are your thoughts about Casey Patrol? Casey Patrol, I really, you know, I really liked this episode. I know it was kind of a bottle. It was re, you know, in the sense that our our primary folks were taking a break, and I, and, I, and I do like that they do this in this series, because to your point, things were getting to that place where if we don't do something different, we're going to start feeling it's going to start feeling repetitive. So mm-hmm. introducing Dor- re- reintroducing Dorothy and just reminding us that oh yeah, she's she she has been with Danny the Street this time. Was was a very good detour, and um, and and also really hit on a lot of the you know a lot of the sort of fundamental things going on in the show. Like for example, why are you know our Doom Patrol our folks never never do age, <laughs> and you know and and Niles you know with that the the, thing, the necklace, you know he used that to extend his life, but also how he kept Dorothy as a child and now you know and now we see dorothy free from that and she's you know is really more of a, of a young woman as far as her behavior and stuff instead of that childlike character we we saw in uh, season two so it's um so i i like how they're just carrying everything forward with this story and then at the end there where dorothy does talk about to, to casey as far as the speech about you know how permanent death is, and how she was wanting to use that talisman to, to conjure up now, so she could tell him all these things. As far as you know, give him hell for like keeping her a kid and that kind of stuff. She's not going to get that opportunity. And seeing how Casey reacted to that, you know, because in every comic book she always will win. But then if, if she realized, but if she does kill her father, he's going to be gone for good this time. And, and seeing how it caused her to freeze in that moment. Uh, whenever Danny was was shrunk into a box, so it was it was a really I really really enjoyed this episode. It was it had a it was classic Doom Patrol where it hit all those things that, like I said, character driven beats that carry the story forward because all these little pieces do have a connection to the larger larger thing that's going on. Yeah, no, it's a fair point that. Um... This was not necessarily the same Dorothy that we saw in previous seasons. She has definitely grown up and matured. 
um, expressed a lot more um, conflict than I've seen in the past, um, and I liked it. I I think I honestly prefer this Dorothy over the previous younger childlike Dorothy, yeah, um, which is good. And 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 like I said before, overall, I do. While you were bringing up like the how you like the uh, um, bottle episodes, to me, I like them too. Don't get me wrong. Um, I think it was just jarring for me because to leave it, leave the previous episode with that kind of a cliffhanger with what mm -hmm. what happened um, to Rita um, and the others, and then to jump immediately to this other story. I was like, whoa. We had some momentum going there, and now we're we're stuck here. And and like I said, they did tie them together at the end, so you kind of understood why they purposely had them play out back to back. But for me, it felt it felt very jarring. I almost would have liked um, in episode order for this episode to have aired as the third one, and then mm -hmm. to have the next one because. Clearly, we're going to pick up with Rita um, in episode five. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I don't, I don't know. It's just it was it, it was a bit jarring for me, which caused me to, to take more time to get into the episode um, than I would have preferred. Yeah, it did take me a minute to get into the episode as well. Especially, I mean, it was it was. Very jarring, but also, you know, but it was also another reminder to me why the the themes that they have about Danny the street reminding us about why Danny is a safe place for everyone. And that was another thing that uh, I meant to mention earlier. Um, and you don't know with um, you know Danny being a, you know the whole ish, the whole concept of safe spaces, and even in a safe space, sometimes things bad things can happen because because. Tormix was able to get in there with his little bugs and and convert all the people into into his attack soldiers and um and you know and, and then when you think about how the episode starts where um uh Kaput and um you know whenever like the vandals were trying to you know spray paint over the the Danzy's um sign and stuff and and then realizing that you know whenever that one look that kid was like about to do it and she was like wait a minute you know you know you're here again and he's like no 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 um i'm i'm, I'm here i'm trying to fix this and in showing how safe spaces can you know can manifest, manifest itself in not not only in a physical place but sometimes with with just other connections with people so uh, whenever they were um you know, out there with Casey. So, I mean, it was just a, it was just a lot to unpack in this episode, and um, and which is it, which is probably why I think, that, yeah, you're right. This episode was definitely stronger as a whole than the third one was. Yeah. Well, we will continue talking about Doom Patrol in this season in 2023 because that is a wrap on 2022 for us. Will, why don't you tell our listeners where they can find you? Yes, you can find me on Twitter at Will M. Polk, W-I-L-L-M-P-O-L-K. And you can find me at SJ Belmont, S-J-B-E-L-M-O-N-T. Please follow our crew on Twitter at Cena Nerd. Friend us on Facebook, follow us on Instagram, and visit our website, www.cenanerdpodcast.com. But most importantly, rate, follow, and comment on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube, Google Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. Good night, geek out. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs>